In this video, we're going to be learning how we can use the eraser tool in Adobe Photoshop. So thanks for tuning back into my design class. Like I said, we're going to be diving right into how to use the eraser tool, but also in this video, we're going to be covering how you can use it for different layer types. For example, there might be instances where you want to use the eraser tool on types of layers that don't actually allow you to use the eraser tool directly on them. So we're going to be covering how you can convert your layers in order to make sure you can use the eraser tool too. But first of all, let's actually learn how we can use the eraser tool itself. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is actually unhide a layer I've already pre-made. So as you can see in the layers panel, I have a whole set of different layers that I've already created for us. Just a simple rasterized layer, a text object, a shape layer, and then a smart object. So we'll go through the last three in the latter stages of this video, but I'm just going to uncheck the first layer so we have something that we can actually erase. So in order to find the eraser tool, what we do is go to the left hand toolbar. And as you can see, just above the gradient tool, we have the eraser tool. And if you hover over it, it gives you a small infographic that shows that the shortcut to the eraser tool is E. So that's both for Windows and Mac. If you just hold on that with your left mouse key, there are some other examples of the eraser tool too, but we'll cover those in later videos. So we'll just make sure we have the standard eraser tool selected. And as you can see at the moment, my cursor is showing a stop sign. And this is because I can't actually erase anything from the layer without having the layer selected first. So in order to do this, what we have to do is go to the layers panel and make sure we have our correct layer selected. So if at any point you're wondering why the eraser tool isn't working, you're probably not on the correct layer or you have a layer type that doesn't actually allow you to erase. So all I have to do now is actually just hold my left mouse button. And as you can see, I can start cutting away with my eraser. So I can just go over all of the elements of my layer that I want to remove and just cut it in order to get a different shape. And this is a destructive process, which means the information, the pixels that we've actually deleted is no longer recoverable if we go ahead and actually make further changes in the future. But for now, what I can do is undo it. So that's also always an option, but just remember it is a destructive process. So I'm gonna just press Command and Z on my keyboard or Control and Z for Windows in order to undo that. So we've got it back again. Now we have a few options when it comes to customizing our brush for the eraser tool itself. If you're already familiar with the brush tool, then this is very similar, but all we have to do is right click in order to bring up the brush settings. As you can see, we can change the size of the brush here. So I can, for example, make it slightly smaller. And then we can also change the hardness, which is the second option, which basically refers to the boundary of our brush. So as you can see here, we have a much softer brush with much softer edges. And here we have a harder brush with more harsh edges. So we can change this by changing the hardness. So obviously the second option is 100% hardness, but we can decrease that to say 30%. And when I start to draw, you'll notice that A, the brush is much smaller and the hardness of the brush is much softer. So that's just a quick way in order to actually go ahead and change your brush at any moment. Now, another parameter that you can also use is the opacity of the brush, and you'll see these options at the top of your screen. So the opacity of the brush actually refers to how much you're taking away every time you're using the brush tool. So at the moment it's set to 100%, which means when I'm deleting, everything is being removed within the space of my cursor. But if I decrease this to say 40%, as you can see, I only take away 40% of that area. I can then go over it again in order to take away another 40% and so on until eventually we take away all of it, just like that. So we keep reducing the area by 40% each time. Great, so I'm just gonna reset the opacity up to 100% and I'm gonna leave the brush size and hardness like this for now. So as you can see, the eraser tool has worked perfectly on our rasterized layer. And basically the rasterized layer means that it's a layer built up of pixels. And what the eraser tool does is it removes pixels from your image. But what if we had layers that weren't rasterized layers? So layers such as text objects, shapes, or smart objects. So let's take a look at how we can do this with these other layers. So I've already created a few in advance and basically it's going to follow the same technique for all of them. And it's going to come down to one of two very simple principles. So I'm just going to hide the first layer and unhide the text object. So as you can see at the moment, when I hover the eraser tool over my text object, once again, we get that stop sign, which means we can't actually go ahead and change it. So all we have to do is actually convert our text object into a rasterized layer because at the moment our text object isn't made up of pixels and obviously the eraser tool only erases pixels. So a rasterized object is the way to go because that is actually built up of pixels. 
So in order to do this, what we can do is actually go to the text layer itself, right click, and then go to rasterize type. So rasterize means obviously converted to a rasterized layer. And then the type is obviously referring to the text object. So just by pressing on that, as you can see, the thumbnail has now changed. So it's no longer a text object. And if I then go to the image itself and erase part of the text, as you can see, it now removes from our layer. Now, one or two things to bear in mind with when we do this to text objects. By rasterizing the layer, it now means we can't actually go back and edit the text itself because the text has now been converted to a rasterized layer and we can only change text from a text object. Now, the best workaround for this is to actually use masks instead of erasing directly from text objects. I will be making a video in the future on how masks work, so do stay tuned for that. But if that video isn't out there already, then I'd highly encourage you to check out how to use masks in Adobe Photoshop, because this will basically mean that you can erase part of your image while still keeping it a text object. So the next example that we had was a shape layer. So as you can see, I've already pre-made another shape layer. And once again, I can't edit this either. And this time it's because it's a vector based shape, which obviously means it's not formed of pixels. So obviously all we have to do is go to the layer itself, right click once again, and then this time rasterize layer. So it'll say rasterize layer instead of type because it's no longer referring to a text object. And then obviously I can go ahead and actually delete from our shape. And then the final option that we had is a smart object. And obviously smart objects are a great way to group multiple things together in Adobe Photoshop. You can then go ahead and actually apply loads of transformations or different adjustments to that smart object without actually changing the content within it. But once again, because it's no longer a rasterized layer, we can't actually use the eraser tool. So even though the smart object is built up of lots of pixels, some of the layers within the smart object might not be rasterized. So for example, we have a text object within our smart object. And this basically means that once again, we can't use the eraser tool on smart objects. Obviously one of the workarounds might be if, for example, I'm looking to delete part of the image and the text is actually fine. What I could do is actually double click on the smart object thumbnail itself in order to enter the smart object, then zoom in, make sure the image is selected and then erase part of it here. For example, I could erase all of this side, press command and S on my keyboard in order to save it, then go back to my original composition. And as you can see, it's actually erased part of that. But for example, if I also wanted to erase part of the text, then this is no longer possible. So what I can do is actually undo those changes in here, then press command and S once again. Anytime you make a change in a smart object, always remember to save because this will actually make sure it appears in your other image. Obviously, one way you can be a bit safer in order to make sure you've always got a copy later is you can actually duplicate your layer beforehand. So for example, if I wanted to make sure I had a copy of this and I could just leave it hidden in the layers panel, it won't affect my designs at all, but it means I can always go back and change my smart object in case I make a mistake when I'm erasing the next version. So in order to do this, all we have to do is press command and J. As you can see, I've now created a copy. So I could, for example, now actually unhide the original smart object and I won't touch that, but if I ever need to go back and make any changes, I always have a copy. I can right click on the new copy and go to rasterize layer. And then obviously go ahead and delete whatever elements I want to from that new version. So those were the basics of how to actually use the eraser tool in Adobe Photoshop on a whole load of different layer types. Hopefully that made it a bit of sense. Obviously, like I said, there will be an easy workaround, which is to apply masks instead of using the eraser tool. Do keep an eye out on the channel to make sure you don't miss that video when it does come out. Like I said, I'll be making that very, very soon. Also remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and also to subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new Photoshop tutorial.